Your local sports leader, Adelphia Cable Channel 3, presents Niagara University Basketball. The tip-off is just moments away, but first, here's an Eagles eye view on the key matchups. With Purple Eagles head coach Andy Walker, here's Lou Panessa. The Niagara Purple Eagles continue their homestand tonight. The University of Vermont Catamounts in the Niagara Falls and Convention and Civic Center, a team Niagara has beaten for the last 12 meetings. But Coach Andy Walker, I know right now you're not taking anything for granted. You had 12 in a row from New Hampshire, and they come in here stolen upset. Yes, uh, things seem to be turning on us right now, and uh, but nonetheless, we're still working hard and doing the things we have to do. I just think it's just one of those situations right now where we're a real deep lull, not a lull mentally, but just a situation where we just have we need one good win to get us going again what's the players attitude uh, I know it's you you came out and played hard before you had questions sometimes the intensity but they gave you a good effort in New Hampshire well they sure did and uh, it seems like everybody plays their toughest game against us this year maybe it's that we're losing uh, leaving the league this year and it's their last hurrah and uh, maybe it's fitting but I don't like to fit too tight and uh, uh, we're gonna be playing against Vermont as you as you well know and uh, we plan to really go out there and beat them. Okay, now what about the healthier team? Mark Henry had a little bit of a knee injury in the uh, New Hampshire game. How will he be ready? Mark Henry's fine. Right now he's a little, little touch of the virus, 24-hour uh, bug or whatever you want to call it. And he's fine, though. He'll be fine. And, uh, of course, L.D. Moore is still out. But uh, Derek Bavard is doing a comparable job right now. So we just got to uh, put a few wins together. It's going to be tough because we have Vermont and then, as you well know, you know, Siena. But nonetheless, hey, only judges when the last ball goes up. What about Calavita from Vermont? He was slowed by injury. He was out uh, last year when you faced Vermont. Uh, really coming back, maybe not the player he was, but is he improving as the year goes on? Do you worry about him? Well, I think he's uh, definitely improving because uh, they give him the ball more often. You can only improve when you get the ball early in the season. I don't think they were acclimated back to his, uh, his, his, uh, his posture being there again. Uh, so now they're getting him the ball. It's uh, more than mid midway through the season, and he's playing a lot better. Uh, nonetheless, Calavita alone has never been able to beat us. Uh, we just have to try to neutralize those three-point shooters, along with playing tough defense and keeping them off the boards, Calavita, that is. Vermont had a very young team last year. Most of the players back again this year, but you touched on a point. They love to fire up the three-pointer. What will you do defensively? Well, we just have to play them a lot of man-to-man, -man, I feel. Uh, we can't let them, we can't sit back in a zone regardless how good we might feel we're doing, but when they start shifting that ball from side to side, they got three guys who can launch them and they can stick them, and this seems to be a very good shooting atmosphere for everybody who comes in here. Yeah, I was just mentioning that before about how the NAC teams are getting their last licks in, and really uh, they haven't had a problem. Uh, the convention center had been a good place for you. You only have well, one. Well, you know, it's uh, you know, 15 feet, 10 feet high. You know, same court, 94 feet. I mean, if you come in with the right mental attitude, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's not like uh, we're getting humongous crowds in here to really, you know, shock anyone right yet. But uh, we're going to get things rolling real soon. What about off uh, defensively? You were pressing a lot in New Hampshire. And you said you may have run out of gas. Will you, will you tend to keep that kind of tempo, that kind of pressure again? Well, I think we want to pressure at times, pick and choose. Uh, I think that's more important than just doing it all game, especially if it's not effective throughout the whole 40 minutes. But, uh, you know, this team is uh, not as good as our team. And it's simple to say that we have to go out there and play a man-to-man, -man, a lot more man-to-man -man this game you'll see. The 6-10 and 10 record isn't the worst thing. It's not great by your standards or Niagara standards. I know you'd like to improve on it, but would you say the way things have been going lately might be uh, part of the toughest part of your coaching career? Right now it is, but it's not over yet. And uh, when going gets tough, the tough get going. And I really feel that. And uh, we have 11 more games or so left, plus uh, a new season when the, uh, when the tournament starts. So nothing's lost yet. And, uh, you know, we'll be right there at the end. I really feel that way. I haven't given up. My spirit is still high. Uh, the kids are still practicing hard. So... You know, when you're doing the things you're supposed to be doing, certain things certain happen. Certain things happen at certain times, but around the corner, some good things have to happen. So it's going to turn around sooner or later is what you're telling us. That's right. Okay, now I know you've been dying to do this for a while. You haven't had the opportunity because of travel plans. You give us your prediction tonight. A win. A W is a W. <laughs> well, we'll see what happens. Mike Jankowski and I will be standing by courtside at the Convention and Civic Center for the tip-off of tonight's game right after this. They are our national treasures, timeless priceless riches that belong to us all. But we have another national treasure that we must not forget. It is our water, the lifeblood of our nation. It is the water we drink, the water for our farms and ranches, the water for our industries, now and for the future. Find out what you can do about conserving our water and improving its quality. We owe it to our children. Call 1-800-THE-SOIL. Lynette Woodard. Basketball opened up a whole new world for me, and it can for you too. So if you have a chance to play, 
Don't just sit there. Jump at it. Go for my love. From the Niagara Falls Convention and Civic Center, Adelphia Cable Communications Niagara presents Niagara University Men's Basketball, a Channel 3 sports exclusive. Our analyst for Purple Eagles Basketball is NU Athletic Director Mike Jankowski. Now here with the play-by-play -play is Lou Panessa. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Niagara University Basketball. Tonight, the Purple Eagles taking on Vermont and the Catamounts here at the Niagara Falls Convention and Civic Center, a game that, as head coach Andy Walker predicted, could be a win for Niagara University in what has been a strugglesome season. Vermont has not been uh, one of the stronger teams in the North Atlantic Conference, Mike. We could say that over the past few years. They have not done well in their trips to Western New York over the past years, but still a scary team in that they can shoot the ball from the outside, and they do have a very strong center in Joe Calavita down in the middle. A couple good guards in uh, Kenny White, who's averaging 11.5 points, uh, as well as Bart Donovan, uh, 5.1 points. Uh, Joe Calavita missed most of last season with a fractured ankle. Uh, he was a preseason all-conference pick uh, last year, uh, currently averaging 17.6 points, 8.6 rebounds. So they're strong uh, at the guard positions, at the center positions. Uh, got a couple people averaging six points uh, each. Uh, complimenting Calavita up front and Kevin Roberson and uh, Raheem Hulanel. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the negative statistic is that they're 3-11. and 11, uh, They beat Middlebury, which is a Division II or Division III school, in their opener by 10. Uh, and their only wins after that have come at the expense of Colgate, 62-59 to 59 and 69-66. Uh, Niagara has won uh, 12 consecutive decisions over uh, the Catamounts and certainly looking to extend it to 13 and uh, trying to shake things up and then get some momentum going here down the stretch. Taking a look at some of the notes for tonight's game, you mentioned that one of them, Niagara, has beaten uh, Vermont and they lead the series 14-2. to They have beaten Vermont the last 12 meetings and uh, they won earlier this year 79-70. In that game, I don't think Calavita was back to full strength, but he's rounding into form at this point of the year now. should be more dangerous tonight. And Niagara also, as you mentioned, Mike, in a two-game losing streak, including that upset loss to New Hampshire. Charlie um, Francis and uh, Sean Channel did uh, actually a pretty good job against Calavita in that game. Uh, he took only eight shots, managed only eight points, and certainly that was a key, and it'll be a key again tonight. Some keys for Vermont as we look down the notes. They love to shoot the three-point shot. Mike Lubis uh, and Matt Johnson will fire it up, and White who will be starting tonight, Kenny White, all Ladies love to fire up that three-pointer, and they use that to open it up for Calavita down in the middle, who is an NBA prospect. 24 or 26 NBA teams are scouting Calavita, and uh, he's a big center and a big scorer, averaging more than 17 points a game. And that win against Colgate, they came down from 10 points at halftime to win at 69-66. It snapped a 14-game losing streak on the road for the Catamounts. We'll be back with uh, a little bit more about the game and the play-by-play -play right after we pause now for our opening exercises with Don Thurman. Stand on guard. 
Well, Mike Niagara comes into this game 6-10 overall, 3-4 in the North Atlantic Conference. University of Vermont 3 and 11 overall and 2 and 4 in the North Atlantic Conference both now, those wins as you mentioned over Vermont. Critical game coming up uh, this Cavs. evening uh, looking Vermont ahead beyond Vermont and, and, and it's not an easy thing to do but it, it's what makes it all the more difficult is uh, Niagara plays Siena here Saturday. Siena of course not only one of the top teams in the uh, in the top team in the NAC but one of the top uh, 60, 70 teams in the country and after that uh, it's on to Boston for the annual Northeastern BU trip next Kenny, BU and Northeastern trip next uh, Thursday and Saturday. So a critical period. Uh, if Niagara can uh, pull out a victory in this one, uh, take some momentum in Siena, and uh, you never know what would happen Saturday night, and uh, you know, that might carry over in the next Thursday and uh, next Saturday, one way or the other. Starting at the center position is a 6'11 senior from Minnesota, One of the uh, Vermont, individuals uh, for the Catamounts tonight who will see a lot of action is uh, now, freshman from Hutch Tech, Kevin Roberson, a 6'6 freshman who's averaging uh, 6 .38 points per game. Purple Eagles will go with their uh, regular starting five. Uh, in the backcourt uh, from New Haven, number 10, Derek Brevard, 8.5 points, 2.5 rebounds. Uh, point guard Mike Rios, a senior from Philadelphia, number 12, 10.2 points, 5.8 assists. The center will be Tony Francis, a 6'8 senior from the Bronx, 6.0 points, 6.8 rebounds. He'll have his work cut out tonight in Joe Calavita. Up at the forward position, a 6'6 junior, six, six junior from, the Bronx, from the Bronx, a high school teammate of uh, Tony Francis, Patrick Jones, number 30, 12.7 points, 6.9 rebounds. And the other forward is 6'6 six, six senior from Toronto, number 24. Mark Henry, who will not be starting today. Uh, now Mark a had surprise. Uh, uh, Andy Walker mentioned earlier in the week that Mark had the flu and uh, evidently has not responded and doesn't feel strong enough to start him tonight. But Mark in uniform and may see some playing time, but is slowed down by a virus tonight. So I know that is a cause for concern. I mean, when you're looking at L.D. Moore out with that uh, hand operation and hand injury and now Mark Henry not starting, you lose two very important cogs to this Niagara offense. In his stead, Brian Bleach, a 6'6 freshman from uh, St. Catharines, averaging 2.0 points uh, and 3.8 rebounds. The officials tonight, one of the best in the business from the falls, Henry Nichols, Gene Manji, and Terry Stout. Uh, Henry Nichols gets to do 30 games a year. He visits one conference, uh, each conference one time, and this is the game he was assigned to in the North Atlantic Conference, a homecoming for him here. And here we go, we tip it off. The tap controlled by Vermont, and Kevin Roberson gets it and gives it off to the guard. That's number 32, Kenny White with the ball. Niagara comes out right away in a man-to-man -man defense. A lot of time for him to shoot, but he passes off to White. White guarded by Rios. Pops the long one, way short, air ball. Pat Jones with the rebound, Niagara pushing it up quickly. That's Rios to Brevard in the corner. Brevard tries to drive, and the foul will be called on Kenny White. Foul is charged to number 32, Kenny White. Obviously White's first. His first, Vermont's first team foul. I think this is one of the few times, Mike, we can say that Niagara actually should be the much quicker team out on the court tonight. Vermont very slow afoot. Derek Brevard looking to inbound, finally gets it into Brian Bleach. And Vermont will play a lot of junk defense tonight. They don't go a lot of man-to-man, -man, but they don't play straight zones either. They'll play a matchup kind of zone, 3-2, and a lot of junk. Tom Brennan puts in a little intricacy. Pat Jones free in the lane. Shot goes in and out. Calavita with the rebound. Vermont up quickly. Working outside, there's Calavita inside, going one-on-one -on -one with Francis' turnaround, in and out, Tony's got the rebound. And Niagara up quickly again, Rio slows it down, Vermont quickly back on defense. So we basically in two trips have saw what Vermont plans to do all night long, pop from way outside or get it inside to Calavita. Catamount shooting 43% from the floor as opposed to 44.9 for opponents. No room for Rios, it goes inside to Pat Jones, his fake, turnaround bank, no good, too strong. Ball goes out of bounds, and it will be Vermont's ball. White brings it up. 
As the ball is Niagara, switches to almost a matchup zone. They're going to box with Tony Francis on Calavita. And a shot is good from the outside by Raheem Uland L. Uh, sophomore six, six sophomore. Randolph, New Jersey. L off to a slow start this year for the Catamounts. He came out and was their leading scorer last year when Calavito went down in injury, but is averaging only six points a game this year and an off year. Inside, Tony Francis. No good. And the rebound controlled by the Catamounts. Niagara looking to go inside in their first three possessions, but can't get the shot to fall. I'm sure they'd like to see Calavita get into foul trouble. They're going to go after him. Three-point attempt is nothing but net for Donovan. And Vermont leads it 5 nothing. Donovan from Bangor, Maine. You wonder how he got away from the uh, Black Bears. Brevard goes baseline, dishes off to Jones. His shot off the glass and in. You know, Mike, I missed the toilet paper. We had CAA outlawed it, but they had just added some. In the corner, a free jumper is short. Rebound, Bleach and Brevard fight for it. And Tony Francis has it. Rio springs it across. Well, technically, the NCAA didn't outlaw toilet paper. They just gave you a technical foul if you did it. <laughs> Around the perimeter goes to Brevard. Rios. Inside to Francis. Oh, bounce the pass off the head of Brevard. Calavita picks up the loose ball, goes to the floor, and here come the Catamounts. Inside the key, Bleach, Hondell. They come to this side with White. Calavita's free inside to go L. L working on Jones. The turnaround in and out for the foul. Jones is first, Niagara's first. Raheem oh, Hulan L, a 6'6 sophomore. A real lanky kind of guy. Niagara's first team foul. Number 33, Kevin Roberson on the line. Shooting two. We got a mistake out there. That's Kevin Roberson, 6'7", which makes him... <laughs> which <laughs> makes kind, of lean, kind of a lean kind of guy. Yeah. Because Hulan L is a little bit stockier. <laughs> oh, he's uh, also a cross-country runner at uh, Hutch Tech. Calavita boxes out, and the rebound comes back out to the Catamounts. Roberson with the loose ball. Work around the pick on Rios. They go inside. Calavita turn around on the baseline. He's short. Francis with the rebound. Calavita got away with a reach in there. Niagara comes the other way. 5-2, 16-11 remaining in the first half. The Catamounts lead it. Bleach. Work around the perimeter of the zone. They go Tony Francis. Now cutting. Brevard goes down the lane. Shot is good. Tony Francis pulled Calavita away from the paint and made room for Brevard to drive. 5-4, Niagara trails by one. That's Roberson. Looking for Calavita to get it over. Tony Francis, Calavita under the basket, muscles his way up, shot is short, and the foul will go against Calavita, Niagara's ball. Fouls charged to number 25, Joe Calavita. Calavita's first. His first. Vermont's second. Vermont's second team foul. We have an official's timeout. Official's timeout with 15.33 remaining in the first half. Vermont, which jumped out to a 5-0 lead, leaves it 5-4 at this point. Calavita, strong player both inside and outside. Uh, recall the uh, first-round playoff game against Vermont. Uh, the year that Niagara went to the NIT, Calavita was essentially all of Vermont's offense, scored 35 points uh, as uh, Vermont was beaten decisively uh, by uh, Joe R. Lucas, Alex Agudio, Gary Bossert and company. Calavita was out all of last year with a stress fracture in his left leg. And then, at the start of this year, started suffering tendonitis in his right foot. So he really never got off to a, a strong start this year, but is just starting to round into form, and he's been tearing it up lately. Uh, Calavita has been hitting over 70% in his last three games. And uh, was named the North Atlantic Co Conference Player of the Week for the week ending January 22nd. 
Morris. Cut off to a bit of a slow start, but he's been uh, Vermont's leading scorer in uh, each of their last four games, 27 against Colgate uh, last Saturday. That career high, incidentally, was not 35. It was 40 against the Purple Eagles in that playoff game. Brevard goes inside to Pat Jones. Jones working to the basket, gets his man up in the air, draws the foul, and nails the bucket. Good work by Pat Jones. Fouls on Roberson. That's his first. Vermont's third. Fouls charged to number 33, Kevin Roberson. Jones Niagara, now with four. Niagara doing a respectable third. job running the offense. They're getting the ball inside. The first few trips, they didn't get it to fall. Seems like Jones has taken about 80% of Niagara's shots as well. He makes the three-point play. Niagara leads by two. Seven to five, and Niagara presses now in the full court. Calavita. Brings it across himself, now gives off to White. Niagara goes to a 1-3-1 zone. Donovan drives, his shot is good. Boy, they just let him get right up to the corner of the foul line and nail an easy jumper. And the game's tied 7-7. Donovan playing in the guard position at 6-6 as Henry about to come in. Bleach from the corner. Basket by Bleach. Freshman nails his first attempt. Calavita trapped at half court, gets it away. Bleach knocks it away. Three on one for Niagara. Pat Jones lays it up and in. Assist to Bleach. Two key contributions from Bleach. Niagara continues the full court pressure. Calavita across the line. Pat Jones knocks the ball out of bounds. Out of bounds. Better ask Bob Laura if he's all right. <laughs> Substitution, number 24. Never Mark missed a word. <laughs> Mark Henry off the bench and in the game, and uh, Brian Bleach comes out for the Purple Eagles. Drive and the bank shot, good from Kenny White. Niagara a little lackluster on defense the last two trips down. 11-9, they lead it. Of course, they did force the one turnover on the pressure. When Vermont has set up their offense, they've been able to get good shots and good baskets. Mark Henry on the baseline, cut off, brings it back out to Rios, cross court to Brevard, free from three. Basket Two. It's foot on the line, and it's 13-9 Niagara. They get it across to Donovan. Calavita tripped up by L. And Rios out pressuring Kenny White. That's Calavita, guided by Tony Francis. Calavita starts to drive, pulls up, shot no good, rebound. Pat Jones, here comes Niagara on the break. Rios will have to slow it down. Derek Brevard, back to Rios. They go underneath to Jones. Baseline, forces it up and in. Another nice offensive move by Pat Jones. Now with nine. Niagara continues to press, but Vermont breaks it easily this time. That's Donovan with the ball around Brevard, goes inside, the ball's knocked out. Donovan picks it up. And he hands off to White. Back to Donovan, Donovan drives around Jones, pulls up with a shot good. Basket by Donovan. Donovan with seven. Niagara in a good offensive flow, but defensively they've been lacking a little bit tonight. Vermont's getting very easy shots as well. The Purple Eagles lead at 15-11. Donovan averaging only 5.1 and only 37% from the floor. It's Tony Francis working on Calavita. Shots way too strong right to Pat Jones. Basket by Jones. Jones having a field day inside. Kenny White calls the offensive play. And Niagara goes into a zone defense, but they pack in Tony Francis and Calavita. Oh, room for L right around Jones. Bank shot good. Excuse me, right around Henry. And it's still a four-point game, 17-13. Substitution ready to come in for Vermont, number 42, Brad Chandler. Brevard in the corner. Inside, Tony Francis back out to Brevard. And Reels will pull it back off top. Now they work the perimeter inside. There's Jones on the cut in the lane. Double pumps. Shots no good. Tipped up. 
Right down Mark Henry's got it. He goes back up with it. Basket by Henry. And Niagara leads by six. And again, pressing. They get it across. Break situation here for Vermont. They pull it back out. Now, we watched New Hampshire do this in the first half against Niagara and, and not run their offense excessively. In the New Hampshire game, when New Hampshire started taking it to the basket in those situations, they came back from that 13-point deficit. Tony Francis with good defense with a steal. Kell trying to get inside to Calavita. So Niagara with an opportunity to push the lead up to eight here with ten and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Jones back out to Rios. He tries to drive. Dish is off to Francis, who's short. Gets it up and in again. Francis. Francis lost the handle going up the first time. <laughs> he was fortunate the ball came right back to him. <laughs> Pretty play by Rios. Pat, Pat Jones picks up his second foul of this half, and uh, I have a second half. Second Patrick foul of this half. <clears throat> his second. That groan was from I Pat Jones. As he's called for his second foul and second team foul on the Purple Eagles. Another timeout here. As Pat got a little bit too much of the arm of Joe Calavita. Again, Niagara using the pressure. It seems to be disturbing the Catamounts, but they are.